Um, please excuse my voice and my red nose because I am not feeling well, but I did not want that to stop me from reading you a book this weekend. And I actually picked a book that one of our friends in our classroom, um, he didn't pick the book, but he told me about the series of books that he just found out that he um, really likes. And so I picked one from that series. It is Flat Stanley, and the title of this one is Flat Stanley and the Firehouse. And I'm going to use my schema and guess that this probably happens at a firehouse because it says it in the title, but it also has a picture of Flat Stanley on a fire truck. Um, so I can think that, but I don't know what's going to happen when Flat Stanley um, goes to the firehouse. So let's read and find out. And let me know if you like Flat Stanley and um, I can read more from the Flat Stanley series if you do like it. All right, here we go. Stanley Lambchop lived with his mother, his father, and his little brother, Arthur. Stanley was four feet tall, about a foot wide, and a half an inch thick. He had been flat ever since a bulletin board fell on him. That's no good. Stanley's family found it handy having a flat boy at home, and Stanley didn't mind helping out. Stanley held tools for his father while Mr. Lambchop repaired the car. Stanley helped Arthur practice his backflips. Stanley gave Mrs. Lambchop a perfect place to roll out pie crust, except when he felt ticklish. What would you have Stanley help you do at home? Stanley made a good stencil, too. Hold still, said Arthur. Stanley held his breath as Arthur, Arthur traced him carefully. Children all over the city were entering a poster contest for Fire Safety Month. I hope we win the trip to the firehouse, said Arthur. Me too, said Stanley. I have always wanted to slide down the pole. The next Monday, a letter arrived. Hey, guess what, shouted Arthur. Hey is for horses, Mrs. Lambchop said. Try to remember that, dear. Sorry, said Arthur. Guess what? Our poster won the contest. We're going to the firehouse on Saturday. Mrs. Lambchop clapped. I knew you boys had my talent for art, she said proudly. Stanley and Arthur practiced fire drills all week long. Arthur crawled around the house on his hands and knees. Stanley did the stop, drop, and roll, mostly the roll. At last, Saturday came. The lamb chops drove to the firehouse. Welcome, bellowed Chief Abbott. A puppy bounced at his feet. Arf, 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 arf. Don't mind, Spark, said the chief. He's still in training. Why do you think they named their dog Spark? That's a pretty cute name, but I bet there's more meaning behind that. Chief Abbott led the lamb chops through the firehouse kitchen. We firefighters cook up some tasty meals, he said. Mr. Lamb Chop got out his camera. He took a picture of a pot of chili. Everyone went on to the bunk room. Very nice, said Mrs. Lamb Chop. Can I see the trucks, said Arthur. Of course, said Chief Abbott. He led everyone down to the garage. Stanley was disappointed. He had wanted to get there. He wanted to get there by pole. Remember, he said he wanted to ride the pole. He couldn't wait to do that. Boots and pants lay on the floor. Oh, my, said Mrs. Liam Chop. I could tidy up if you'd like. Chief Abbott laughed. We leave these out so we can jump into them in an emergency, he said. Neat, said Stanley. Chief Abbott pointed to the ladder truck. Come on up if you'd like. Wow, said Arthur. The boys scrambled onto the truck. Spark was right behind them. Suddenly, the alarm bell rang. Chief, code nine on Oak Street called a firefighter. The chief turned to the lamb chops. How would you folks like to come along on a rescue? A rescue? Will it be safe? asked Mr. Lamb Chop. 
You bet, said Chief Abbott. Code 9 means a cat up a tree. Probably furball again. Mr. Lambchop looked at his wife. She gave a little nod. Yes, yelled Stanley and Arthur. Stanley, turn on the siren. Arthur, hit the lights, shouted Chief Abbott. My goodness, is that necessary, asked Mrs. Lambchop. No, said Chief Abbott. It's just more fun this way. The truck raced out of the station. Soon, it pulled up to a tall tree. A tiny cat shivered at the top. He said that it's more fun that way. Do you think it'd be fun to ride a fire truck? I think it'd be kind of cool. She's pretty high up this time, said Chief Abbott. Spark panted at the chief's feet. All right, let's get her down. Two firefighters raised the ladder. The lamb chops moved out of the way. Chief Abbott climbed until Furball was just a few feet away. Good kitty, he said, stretching out his hands. Come here, Furball. Looks like they're worried by looking at their faces. Spark started to bark. Arf, arf, arf. For a second, Furball froze. Then she jumped the other way. Furball, cried Chief Abbott. He was too late. Furball was heading for the ground. The lamb chops looked up. Their mouths were open in surprise. Oh, I think Furball got scared by Spark's bark. All at once, Stanley threw himself onto the grass. Grab my hands, he told his mother. Mrs. Lambchop grabbed his hands. Grab my feet, he told Arthur. But Arthur didn't move. I wonder what's going to happen. Hey, shouted Mrs. Lambchop at the top of her lungs. Grab his feet. Arthur blinked. He grabbed Stanley's feet. Stretch cried Stanley. Arthur and Mrs. Lambchop stretched Stanley between them. They were not a second too soon. Boing! Meow! Furball bounced on Stanley's belly, then landed safely on the ground. The firefighters started clapping. Arthur and Mrs. Lambchop stood Stanley back up. Arthur looked at his mother. Hay is for horses, he said. Remember? Mrs. Lambchop grinned. Good work, Lambchops, said Chief Abbott, racing over. How can we ever thank you? Well, said Stanley, there is one thing. What do you think that one thing's going to be? I think I might know from hearing what he said earlier. Let's see. Ah, whee! He got just what he wanted to ride the pole. Well, I hear that Flat Stanley goes on a lot at adventures. And so if you have a specific adventure that you'd like to see if Stanley goes on, let me know and I can try to find that book from the library. Okay? And I'll see you later. Bye!